Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Hedera and HBAR. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So obviously the market is pulling back. I have been waiting for this. I have had Fiat on the sidelines waiting to buy. Um, I've basically been sending you guys my buy targets on HBAR. And uh, when we come down to Hedera, um, here we have it at about roughly almost six and a half cents. I'm waiting to see if we do get that, you know, four to five cent range test. Um, I do believe that we could possibly see it. A lot of altcoins right now are bleeding out as Bitcoin just kind of ranges sideways around the 20k region, waiting for it to break down. Um, we might even see a nice little impulse off of around 20k, uh, which would be pretty interesting to see. But I really want to see Bitcoin dominance rising so that all coins could actually go down a little bit more. And I know that that is like, you know, kind of greedy to say, but, you know, I just don't think that we are seeing a major move on a lot of all coins. Like we have been seeing, you know, a lot of blood throughout the market. Um, and a lot of people will argue like, you know, we've seen max fear, but I actually don't believe that we have. Um, I think that, you know, for the most part, individuals that are newer into the market or maybe, you know, even that got in like r roughly around like a year or even two years ago um, are thinking that max pain is here. But even in regards to like a full on bear market, we really haven't seen our bottom figure on Bitcoin. But of course, I might be wrong. And, you know, if I am, I still am averaging into my positions. I still have my ape zone buy points and my buy targets set. Um, and a lot of those are just like, you know, auto buy targets that I already, you know, put up in terms of like buy orders. So, with that in mind, let's move on and let's talk about a few things. So actually, as everybody is, um, you know, getting hurt by the price action or maybe you're not, you know, getting hurt by the price action, I'm doing a massive giveaway on my Twitter. So I'm actually doing a 500 XRP giveaway, a 1000 HBAR giveaway, two QNT tokens and also 5000 Casper over on Twitter. I'm about to hit about like 30,000 followers and I figured like why not celebrate by, you know, giving back to everybody. I've seen a few people saying like, you know, this is just a way to bribe, you know, your followers basically to have more individuals follow you. But that is not the case. I do not care about the follower account. I care about, you know, how far we've actually grown. Um, like it's absolutely insane how large, you know, the audience has gotten. And, you know, you guys are, you know, to thank for that. So in regards to that, like I want to give back. So this is basically me giving back to the community. I will be doing an official announcement of this giveaway uh, once we get closer to 30K. It's inevitable at this point we've been growing massively on Twitter and also on YouTube and I cannot thank you guys enough so I do greatly appreciate it so thank you all um, but also let's go over to you know the HBAR foundation so in regard to the 250 million dollar metaverse fund it has not gone you know untouched and honestly this is probably one of the most exciting funds out there as we have been seeing a large amount of growth within this area from Hedera and I do think that this is actually a great you know area for them to actually focus on uh, specifically around like adoption of the metaverse for an example like KPMG just you know announced seven hours ago enters the metaverse uh metaverse sorry invest 30 million dollars in web3 employee training uh so if this does not tell you where we are basically headed to um, I don't know what will. And of course, they are focusing on, you know, potential metaverse uh, use cases within healthcare, consumer, retail, media, and financial services. In regards to like healthcare, I actually do think that that is a very exciting area to, you know, focus on from the metaverse. Because think about it like this, right? You have augmented reality and also virtual reality where individuals could actually, you know, do test surgeries. And there's like so many opportunities within that area from the metaverse use cases, not even like in regards to like NFTs and tokenization of like, for an example, your he your healthcare records, um, but also like there's a lot of like testing and training that you could actually do as a healthcare you know provider or even a healthcare you know employee. So I actually really look forward to seeing this, and uh, I think that this really is you know sealing the deal on where like Web3 is you know headed. It's one of the big four um, accounting firms in Canada and the United States has revealed the opening of its first metaverse collaboration hub to help its employees and clients pursue growth opportunities in the digital era and uh, we do see that down here you know global spending in the metaverse could reach five trillion dollars by 2030 e-commerce and virtual advertising are expected to be the main source of income in the space and uh, I just think that this is insane when you really kind of look at it like I've seen a lot of price predictions around the metaverse you know 5 13 20 trillion dollars um, I, I we don't know where it's going to go in, in, in regards to like speculation around it like we could only speculate so much but I would say like if all of these markets, all of these industries are basically getting disrupted by Web3 and also the metaverse. Um, I do think that the ceiling is basically limitless. And we do see, you know, the metaverse is a market opportunity, a way to re-engage talent and path to connect people across the globe through a new collaborative, you know, experience. And I do think that this is 
much big like in regards to even crypto itself right like this is so much bigger than like even the internet days uh where you could basically you know invest into some large you know corporations like this is bigger than even investing into amazon in the early days and it truly is something remarkable to be this early into something this large and uh in regards to like the metaverse fund from uh you know hedera not to get off topic um we do see this going to use and we do see you know the fund focuses on gaming and virtual worlds consumer brands and collectibles social platforms and fan engagement and the enterprise metaverse some of these web3 use cases are only being you know made possible by the efficiencies of hedera hashgraph and of course you know we did see the first uh, official triple a gaming title coming to hedera uh lithos i'm very excited for this i do think that this is going to be pretty large and this is going to be leveraging hedera for in-game tokenization no better you know uh, no better project to actually utilize for this um especially in regards to like not only sustainability but also again the cost is uh very large and also scalability factors because again this is a triple a game title so just imagine the amount of demand for this um if it is very successful and uh, of course, we do see down here further in you know February 2022, Ubisoft, the AAA gaming studio, joined the Hedera Governing Council, announcing their Hedera dedicated Ubisoft Entrepreneurs Lab. Alongside this, together we are establishing the future of Web3 gaming on Hedera. And this is why I've said like you know pay attention to what Hedera is actually doing within the Web3 sector um, because they're basically becoming a giant within this area. And I've always said like in regards to where Hedera is positioned, a lot of people will always say like you know HBAR or if you will, Hedera is the trust layer of the internet. I believe that they will become the trust layer of Web3. And this is a very exciting time to be early into, you know, HBAR because again, you know, price action on, you know, HBAR has been extremely rough. Um, you know, tokenomics have been rough as well in regards to like release schedules and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, I do think that it's actually opening the door for a much larger opportunity. And that opportunity is to be able to invest in something as large as Hedera, you know, this early. And, you know, a lot of people will argue, are we too early? You know, to me, I don't think that there, you know, exists an idea of being too early because I, I just think that this is going to be so much bigger than what anybody could really kind of perceive it to be. And we do see in the passing months, India base one to 11 team has announced that they are building four exclusive sustainable P2E games on Hedera prior to join, uh, prior to joining forces with us. One to 11 had already acquired over 2.2 million users within 18 months of its launch. I'm telling you guys, like you need to pay attention to the gaming sector on, you know, Hedera. The Web3, you know, sector on Hedera is absolutely exploding. I've been talking to you guys about NFTs and the NFT sector on Hedera on my NFT channel. If you guys do want to go check that out, link in the top of the description. But it's truly something remarkable to watch the growth of Hedera actually really kind of happen before our eyes. And it is, you know, truly something special. But also, it's truly, you know, remarkable, again, that we are seeing so many announcements around Hedera. We're seeing so much building happening around Hedera during the worst times in this market. So when the market actually does sustain and we we get back to a point where we kind of, you know, settle down a little bit, build some, you know, momentum and start, you know, moving back up. I do believe that HBAR is going to be one of the best opportunities in this market. And of course, we do have to wait until we do bottom out because I'm still waiting for, you know, some nice lows to be targeted. But again, as we do see major announcements around this sector, I do believe that Hedera is going to be taking over, especially in regards to the Web3 scene. Now, also, we do see former Google CEO, the Web3 vision is correct. The tech to make it happen needs to be or needs to get built. The funny thing is, is that it's already here. But listen closely to what Eric Schmidt is actually saying. Uh, and then finally, wanted to get your thoughts on crypto and Web3, if you will, especially given the fact that valuations, the prices of uh, especially of crypto have come down, how that changes or doesn't well, change the it, equation. And I know Web3 may be considered a different thing than crypto. I know we, we sort of converge well, these well, things. Uh, uh, again, these are marketing terms. But if you assume that, that Web3 was 10 times overhyped and it's corrected five times, it's got some more to go. It's got some more to go. <laughs> and therefore, look, the Web3 vision is correct. The technology to make it happen needs to get built. Here's an example. Ethereum goes to crazy prices with a right. million transactions a day. That's incredibly slow. It needs to get be rebuilt. Uh, and, and that's exactly it. Listen closely to exactly what he says. Prices with right. a million transactions a day. A million transactions a day. That is extremely slow. If you think about it, right? It is true. Like in real world applications, in real world demand, 1 million transactions per day is absolutely nothing. Okay, and Hedera definitely is outscaling that number greatly. But again, the fees on HBAR are not going to account for massive growth 
in regards to the token value uh, simply because we just don't have enough demand of the network yet. Um, but this actually gets me very excited for the future of Web3 to be built on something like Hedera. Could it very well happen? 100%. We don't know if that's going to happen fully because, again, we can only speculate so much. But to me personally, like when we look at the technology and, you know, here we have former CEO, you know, Google CEO basically saying like it needs to be built, a.k.a. the technology. It already is. It's just that nobody's really kind of paying attention and nobody's listening. That's the thing that I find interesting the most about Hedera is the fact that it's still building in silence and not a lot of individuals are actually realizing that. And also, we did see yet again from the HBAR Foundation announcing uh, support of Web23.io, a secure DNS platform that allows users to purchase and tokenize domain names on Hedera for the launch of their smart domain service on the Hedera network. You guys remember the Ethereum name service, right? This is basically, you know, our own uh, Ethereum name service. And I do think that this is going to be great. I think that this is going to be, you know, something special. And again, you could buy, sell, and manage domain names. Again, the domain area, like for flipping domains, is actually pretty large. I, I've actually seen people flip domains and make six figures a year just doing that alone. It is something incredible to do, and it's very easy to do. And I do think that this could be something that, to get in early on that could be something very special and lucrative for individuals to earn a ton of, you know, more income. So definitely check out, you know, web 23 IO as well. Um, I think that this is great. And again, we're seeing H bar basically, you know, taking over in regards to even the smart domain service as well. And, uh, this is something special. And also we did see yet again, another decentralized exchange come into, you know, Hedera. Uh, Healy Swap is coming soon. The first decentralized exchange on Hedera to support swaps between HTS and ERC twenties. Uh, it's fast, green, affordable. Remember what I said about I forgot what decentralized exchange. I think it was Saucer Swap actually. I was like, I look forward to the day where we could basically utilize you know a decentralized exchange on Hedera like Uniswap, except have like basically no fees. And this is going to probably be that you know exact thing. And uh, I do think that that is great because, again, Uniswap is a huge decentralized exchange. It's probably one of the most successful ones out there, and uh, it has a ton of issues. I actually remember around like May or June of last year um, where Uniswap was actually – it was having a ton of congestion. There was a lot of problems. Gas fees were astronomical. Again, this is why we need things like this built on things like Hedera. I look forward to seeing this, you know, truly launch. I'm very excited for it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, though. Um, if you guys did enjoy this video, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day, a beautiful night, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. It's been Nick. Peace out, guys.